I, I, I can imagine it, it might look like magic to some of you seeing this thing fly, but to us it's like magic, you know, to the infinity power. It's, it's uh, because we knew right up front how basically impossible this, this was going to be. DARPA was interested in biomimicry as it applies to small flying aircraft for potential military surveillance reconnaissance applications. And they were interested in, in anything that somebody came up with, whether it be a dragonfly or a hummingbird. They were trying to push the limits. They're looking for high risk, high payoff um, things to fund. And DARPA really wasn't looking to fund uh, a conventional miniature helicopter. Back in the uh, beginnings of the program, we were kind of laughing because we didn't see a, a direct pathway to achieve this. With that size, lifting a payload, flying down the, um, the alleyways with wind, um, we knew that was going to be extremely difficult. And presumably it would have the appropriate communications, control, and stabilization to fulfill this mission. It's in a basically a padded room, so there's foam on the floor and plastic sheeting to keep the aircraft from uh, flying off and uh, getting damaged from hitting a, a wall. Very short flight, small incremental uh, improvements, and I can take my hand off it long enough to bring it in and um, catch it. So here it is outdoors. This is one of the very first outdoor flights, again with the bird body. In the upper left-hand corner, you can see the the, the first video imagery from the aircraft. I designed model airplanes as a kid and built them. And um, that's where you really learn how to do problem solving. And when something breaks, okay, I'm going to make it now work without the tail. And that's what all the guys have on the team. And it's awesome.